Yo guys, welcome back to another video here at Trader Journey. I'm back with a, another video yet again today. So I'm hoping you guys will find this a lot more useful um, for any of you beginner traders. Just before I get into the video, if you guys haven't checked out my Instagram, which is Trader Journey underscore official, make sure you give me a follow there. And uh, I know I'm, I've got very few followers on there at the moment, but uh, I will try upload um, some some pictures daily and some information there daily which hopefully you guys will find useful so uh, be sure to give that a follow over on Instagram so let's get into this video so today we are discussing supply and demand trading so you may see I've seen across maybe social media and YouTube this is somewhat of a, a trending sort of strategy to use it's a very safe and consistent way of trading I do quite like trading with supply and demand zones um, it's very easy to do that and uh, for any new beginner it's an easy strategy to learn um, so I'll be getting into that into today's video and you can see here I've got uh, the trading view application up here which is what I use for technical analysis it's what I use to chart my graphs and uh, it's what I use to to sort of analyze any stock and, and analyze any potential movements in a stock so um, yeah this is this is basically some some work i've been doing on the apple stock you can see here i've charted all the the price levels i've um, got some indicators on there and you can see several lines which i'll try and get into more detail but the main purpose of this video is to explain the supply and demand strategy for trading and how it works and uh, why it's why it's such a key and um key key sort of trading strategy and why it's so popular nowadays as i'm seeing more and more traders develop the strategy and take it on board so it's definitely got some weight to it in the trading community so i'll hopefully get into those details now and uh, be sure to hopefully help you understand this strategy before i get into the details of the strategy be sure to hit the subscribe button the community is joining and it'll be great to have more people join the community as we get to learn these specific strategies that have made me profitable over the last six months particularly this 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 actual um, trading strategy is I've been implementing this for about six months now and uh, it's been great but I've got so many other strategies which I'm looking to share with you guys um, shortly so let's get straight into this so as you can see I have put all the price levels across this Apple chart and uh, you can see it goes back to August but I have charted some older price levels back to 2000 early 2020 before the COVID-19 crash um, but I guess let's stay more relevant to recent times um, of these recent price levels which we've seen on Apple so this is generally how I start to chart all my um, all my stocks that I'm looking at and uh, you can see I've got most of the the um, strong price levels charted on here and as we get into some of the more um, shorter time periods I have started to chart more and more lines on the shorter time periods I haven't looked at the Apple stock in about a week or so so you won't see any new price levels such as that one there that's kind of new so I haven't charted anything recent but uh, this will be enough for me to explain the strategy what you'll also notice on this graph is I've got some patterns here I do like to pattern trade from from now and again if it seems right and if it seems reasonable I will go ahead with pattern trading and this has worked really well with the Apple stock for instance I had an ascending triangle here Apple broke out the ascending triangle and there was the breakout amazing and, and an easy way to make a, a massive move that move went from around 118.26 and it went all the way to 124.90 so gosh that's a six six dollar move six or seven dollar move now the, the money that would have been would, was, was, was crazy so I didn't actually extend the full seven dollar move price move I think I, I, I stopped out around two three dollars I made my money and I exited the trade but um, if you stick to these key levels you would have known that 118 if you're playing a more riskier strategy you would have known that would have hit the next price level and gone straight to 125 that is if you had that charted if you didn't have it charted you wouldn't have known how far it would have gone so if you hit your profit target you would have taken your money off so as you can see on the graph here we've got some we've got some pattern trading there was a um there was a pattern here there was a bit of consolidation between this zone as it broke out look how high it went up it went through 117 
and it hit a 125. So gosh, that was another $8 move. So the Apple stock, um, as you can see, most of the stocks which I trade are highly volatile. They like to move. And for options trading, that is key that you pick stocks that are volatile and that like to move. If um, stocks are fairly stable, you're not gonna make much money through options trading because the price needs to fluctuate in order for you to make money on your contracts. Whether you're making a call contract or a put contract, they need to move in certain directions for you to become profitable, So, which is why you only pick volatile stocks when you decide to options trade. Now, one of the, one of the really interesting moves is there was a massive downward trend going on here with Apple stock. And uh, as you can see here from the, my trend analysis, gosh, that it broke that trend last year. You can see there's a gap up here on 3rd November, there was a gap up and then it just went, it broke through that trend line and it just went, it just went up. So from 112, you could have potentially caught another $7 move. So as you can see here from these trends and these breakouts, Apple likes to move from these breakouts, from these trends, from these pattern trades from for around seven to nine dollars so that's a significant amount of profit for an options trader um, the percentage return would be crazy on those dollar moves um, so yeah I, I'm, so, I'm sort of digressing from the purpose of this video but I'm sure that is vital information which hopefully you guys will understand and appreciate the trend analysis and the pattern trading which you can see on this graph. Now let's get straight into more of the details of what I intended to make this video on and it is supply and demand. Now a lot of people have their own sort of method and own sort of way and unique way of graphing up demand and supply zones but for me I like to make it as simple as possible. Now to trade supply and demand you do need your historical levels it's not something you can look to the future and and sort of guess based on future prices what what a supply zone will be and what demand zone will be you have to look at your historical prices now when i trade supply and demand there there are different supply and demand zones you can create you can create one on for instance this is a four hour chart you can create one on a four hour chart you can create one so i tend to start on a four hour chart so i'm gonna simply chart up this graph with supply and demand zones and talk you guys through the, the rationale and the reasoning behind these different zones. So let's let's go ahead and start with the four hour chart which we're here on at the moment. So if I get up a okay guys so yeah so I'm gonna start to chart up the supply and demand zones on this four hour graph. Now I'm gonna talk you through the reasoning and uh, my decision making as I go through the annotation of this particular graph. So when I look for demand zones, I look for where the price is pushed up a certain range of a price on a stock and it's caused a it's caused it's caused the stock to bounce up from that zone and go into a massive uh, a massive breakout. So a key area here, which is an easy spot, is this huge demand zone so on the four hour chart this is still active for me this 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 particular zone here is still an active demand zone now let me talk you the re talk you through the reason why now what we can see here on the 3rd of august apple went through the demand zone and it broke through the demand zone and it went straight and it it broke through and you can see after it went past the demand zone what did the price do it went up up and up now Apple hit a supply zone and the price broke down. So as it broke down, it went through and it hit the demand zone again, which we previously saw broke through. So as it hit the demand zone, there was demand sitting there and buyers sitting there for the particular stock. And as it hit there, all the buyers stepped in, bought the stock and the price continued up. So you can see it, it double dipped and it tested demand twice. It, as soon as it reached the demand zone, it spiked. Now, we can clearly see this because the stock again in the future, going a few days forward, you can see on the 2nd of November, it didn't even enter the demand zone. It just touched a previous support level of the demand zone and it continued higher. So for me, this is a very high level. Um, this is a, is a hard support demand zone so we know if this price is going to come down the chances are 
that the price is going to test this area and potentially jump up again. Now, what would invalidate this demand zone? Um, what would invalidate this demand zone is that if the price came down here, tested the demand zone, and it actually broke through the demand zone, I would declare this demand zone no longer valid and invalid. I would delete this from the graph. I would simply delete it. But right now, this demand zone is still intact. The price has not touched it back again and it's continued. It's not gone broken through the demand zone. It's continued to touch the demand zone and go up. So for me, this is a very strong level of demand. Now, you're, prob you're probably questioning then, what is a supply zone? A supply zone is where, if, if you look, if you have studied basic economics, if there's too much supply of a given good goods or service or whatever it might be if there's too much supply in the market and demand is not meeting supply what happens to price price drops so right here this zone here for me is 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 clearly a supply zone the price entered the supply zone there was there was not enough buyers there was not enough buyers in the market and the price continued to flush down back into demand so what you'll tend to see with these with all the stocks is price fluctuates between supply and demand so if if someone if someone wants to buy the apple stock they know they might be only willing to pay a hundred a hundred dollars so they will wait for the the price of the apple stock to go back to a hundred dollars for them to purchase the stock it's as simple as that it's very basic a very easy way of understanding how supply and demand works so if i was interested in the apple stock i i myself have do hold apple in my long-term portfolio but for me as a buyer i would see okay the price is at 122 right now that's probably the highest it's been for since one of the highest price levels has ever been so for me i would preferably wait to get to to 110 which for me as a demand and supply trader i would see okay there's just clearly demand in this area so i'm going to wait for it to get there and and wait for the price to surge back up to 122 and in which case you would make 12 dollars a share so for me if you if you're thinking about supply and demand zones this is extremely key for for any sort of trader not only options traders but just stock traders and long-term investors um so going back to the supply and demand zones now i'm going to sort of pattern here up the um, supply zone which is going to be fairly straightforward this for me is a key supply area a key supply area it's 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 um what's interesting is the price has not gone back into this this sort of zone and um it's, it's, it's sort of stayed there. So I'm gonna change this color because I like to keep things, I like to keep things a bit clear here and um, I'm gonna change the color. Somehow, let me try and make this red. Anyway, it doesn't seem to be doing it, which is fine, but this would this would usually show as red, which is really frustrating because I'm just trying to change the color. Alright guys, if you're using Trading View, you should generally be able to just come up with the oh here it is. I completely missed it. It's right here. I like to put those in red. There you go. So clearly I put my supply zones in red when the price is going to drop and I put the demand zones in green, which is a key way of you knowing and differentiating yourself from the supply and demand zone. It's, it's such an easy way of trading, guys. It's probably one of the most simple ways of trading. Um, and for, for, for most new traders, they understand the concept. So this is the four hour supply this is four hour demand it's as simple as that guys there's nothing else to it from the four hour zone from the four hour chart sorry i will then work my way down to the three hour chart now what you can see between the four hour and the three hour there's obviously so many more demand and supply zones one of the key areas which is so easy to see from the very get go i'm hoping you guys are getting to understand the concept and sort of having 
having an eye for the demand and supply zones you can see here there's a straight away there's a, an additional an additional supply zone and what what can you see here you can see that uh, as soon as the price entered this area of supply the price dropped the price dropped and you can see that time again you can see that's happened twice now so so from here on from here on you can see the stock has built a key supply area between 12660 and 12496 that is a key supply area for the three hour chart so the price broke below it it didn't held so this would have been previously interestingly this would have been previously a demand zone because you can see price hit this demand zone and it spiked up but it's broken through that demand zone so this if this was previously annotated as a demand zone i would class that now as invalid and delete it which has now become a supply area so what you can see here price fell down went back into demand which we discussed earlier it jumped back up and it hit supply again which we previously saw broke through now, as it's hit supply, what has it done? It's entered that range. It's come out of that range. So you may be asking now, well, when would you have entered the trade? So if I had seen the price enter demand zone, I would wait because if it was to break through this supply area, this would then become demand. This zone would become demand. So I would be patiently waiting here to see what the price does. Does it break through does it break through supply or does it hold supply and break back down again? And in this particular instance, the the theory has worked and it's it's reached that range. So I would have entered as it broke below that range. That's what I would have done. Now um it's, it's, it's as simple as that. I would wait for the price to break below 12496, which is what I've labeled here as a supply zone we'll wait for it broke and imagine if i if I, I i basically entered this and i think i cut here from a profit my profit target as soon as it hits i take the money off the table but if you guys are more have more conviction of your trade and are certain of um, stock movement like you may be more experienced in the apple stock than i am then you would probably know that based on historical figures here it would go back to demand which it did so you could have bought a contract out so this broke down supply on the 13th of october you could have bought a contract say two three weeks out you could have bought a contract on the 5th of november or or, or 7th 11th november or you would have bought it two three weeks out so that the stock had the stock had time to make out the play it had time to make the move so um this would have taken look i mean 30th of october 4th of november it would have taken a couple of two three weeks for that move to happen so you could have bought a put contract here as it broke down the supply and, and look look if you had kept your demand zone intact it worked so perfectly it went all the way down i even had a downward trend drawn on the graph which i didn't even need because the demand and supply zones work well on their own which is incredible and i think this just speaks for itself how well this strategy works so it broke all the way down to demand and what did it do it came all the way back up to supply and that supply zone is what we already had on your graph so say you didn't know any of this had happened if you didn't know any of this happened you would have created the supply zone already over here and you would have even you would have basically called one move down second move up and now as we're still in play and as i've said before if the general principle is if your price breaks below supply it will continue to go down to retest previous demand now that is the general principle not saying that always happens but generally that is a principle and it will eventually retest supply and retest demand um, that is obviously if there's no significant news such as a market crash then regardless of these zones the price is just going to move in that direction and just crash so if the whole of spy was going to crash these would technically be I, I wouldn't really take these too seriously because the spy in the market overall controls the price and the prices of these stocks especially the big tech which makes up most of spy so what i'm expecting here guys is the stock has re retested supply and it's broken below 
what I would expect based on our theory and our principle of this strategy, I would expect this stock to come all the way back down and retest demand. Now that is ideally what would happen, but if you were if you were sort of content with a 30, 40, 100% return on your contract trading, I would have entered here. I'm not sure if I traded this stock at this particular day or time, but the stock would have dropped here and I would have I would have cut profit here. I would have bought a put here, same as what I would have done here. I would have waited for the stock to stock price to drop below what price is that? I think it's 12501 or whatever it is, this line here. I believe it's 12501. Yeah, so I would have waited for it to fall below 1251 and I would have entered. But if you, like I say, if you if you if you are so have so much conviction of where the stock price is moving based on maybe other trends such as the news, other sort of factors, sorry, um, or other catalysts such as the news. If I know Apple is bringing out their new headphones. So that was supposed to be good news, right? So you would expect based on news alone that that should be a reason for the stock price to go up. So you have to keep those things in mind when and, when sort of using supply and demand, but generally it always follows that sort of rule of thumb that it will go down and retest demand. So, I mean, if you had looked at this historical amount, the historical price movement here on the 13th of October and saw how Apple continued to go down to retest demand, you may be so, so, so um, certain of this that if it's reached that supply zone, it's not broken through supply, this supply stone zone is still valid. I would continue to trade it and and let it retest demand again if you were so sure of that. But like I say, if your profit's on the table and you you're happy with the percentage return, just take the profit. There's no point holding onto a stock, waiting for a bigger move that may not even happen. So um, some of you might be aware that my particular way of strat sort of my particular way, which I enjoy um, options trading, is is via scalping, which means you're only in in stock uh, in a contract for three to four minutes at most um, for to make the most of these strategies on a three hour chart you will need to be swinging the, the stock for for maybe a week maybe a few days for the the stock to have enough time to play out the move so for instance this 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 area here is not going to fall down to demand for maybe a week or two so you have to be patient enough to wait for that price uh, wait for that stock to make that move in order for you to make that that profit. So you'll have to adjust the expiry date of your contract depending on how big a move you're expecting the stock to move by. But uh, judging from this technical analysis here in the supply and demand zone, sorry, I'm expecting this stock price to reach go back down to the 107. Um, but it all depends on, on so many other factors such as the market and whether these demand and supply zones will still be intact. But that is my analysis for now and I, I'm still sticking with that and I do believe strongly in the supply and demand zones and I believe this, this Apple stock will continue to go down and retest demand zone unless it, unless it builds, unless as you can see here, as we go down to the smaller time frames, you may in fact you may in fact create a demand zone here because the price did price did sit there and it and it jumped in jumped back up so you know there are there are certain things you can do and there's certain ways you can um sorry let me just make this a bit greener there we go so if you were trading the stock say not on the time frame we were trading on now say three hours say you went down to 30 minutes you know this is a better way of trading a stock within the 30 minutes so now you can see that this demand zone is relevant on the 30 minute time frame hence you will then adjust your contract expiry depending on what time frame you're trading on how much time you need for the price to play out the particular move that you're expecting so right now if anything, I'm expecting the Apple stock to come straight down and retest this demand zone of 116, 113. Yeah, so I would definitely expect Apple to come back down to 113 and retest this demand zone. But again, it's so important that you keep in mind what time frame are you looking at because 
if you were seeing, if you were looking to trade this on a, in, waiting for a couple of days to make a move back down to here, it's not going to happen. It needs a couple of weeks to make that move. So you need to ensure that the contract you're purchasing has enough time has enough time value on the contract in order for the price to move in the expected direction and give it enough time to play out and you have to be patient with that now like most of you guys i'm not patient enough so i like quick moves i like making quick returns and you have to just simply use smaller time frames so 30 minutes you might want to go down to you might want to go down to 15 minutes and see again so you could there's so many ways you can chart up supply and demand using different time time frames um but i like to i like to stick to 30 minutes it's, it's clean and price levels and and supply and demand zones are easily seen easily seen so i'm i'm i really enjoy trading the apple stock it's such a clear way it's such an easy way i'm used to trading it i know how the historically the stock moves um but uh, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see how this plays out i might have to give you guys an update in a couple of weeks and see if i was right see see how see if this demand zone stayed intact did it break through and create supply and went back down to the next supply next demand zone so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out and it'll be interesting to see how this theory works and if if we're right because the other thing that might happen it might come back up and retest supply and if it does that it'll be interesting to see if it holds supply because now the apple headphones are out maybe it's a chance for investors to buy in because they think it's the price is going to surge again so they may think you may think it retests supply again because it's look, it's retested supply once it's retested twice it might retest the third time and it might actually break through into the secondary four hour supply zone so very interesting and um, i'm hoping this has made sense to you guys and uh, I'm sure it's going to be something you guys can all try. You can try it on several stocks. I tend to do it um, on all the stocks I trade. But as I said, I use different strategies depending on how I trade and what strategy I'm using. And uh, what I think the market sentiment is, I adapt different strategies to, to that. So a very simple strategy that I'm hoping all of you can implement. A very straightforward strategy that it should be easy for most of you to understand if anyone's got any questions let me know in the comment section below feel free to dm me on instagram i'll leave the link in the description box below and um, for anyone looking to start trading you can set up an account with tastyworks i'll leave the description box in the below as well um, tastyworks i stand by them as one of the best platforms on the market i've used three or four platforms um, three or four of the major platforms and uh, tastyworks seems to be the most user friendly for beginners and the easiest to set up as well as fund so be sure to check that out if you're interested in starting to um, trade i'll be i'll be making much more of the many more of these videos for beginners and discussing strategies and easy ways to to sort of make money in the market without risking too much of your capital so like i said hope you enjoyed the video any comments or suggestions leave it in the description box below and be sure to hit that subscribe button as we upload daily videos on strategies and traders um traders journeys and beginners for, for whatever level you are i'm hoping you guys will find this useful this information useful so thanks very much for watching i will catch you all on the next video take care goodbye